Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, working on electro technology entry. That is uh, revisions that we are going to focus on uh, on the DC machines, uh, working on the DC motor at the same time. Uh, so we've got the question paper from November 2022 that we are going to focus on. Question number two, where we're given on 2.1 to state three purposes of the yoke in a DC machine. Remember that the yoke, this is the outer casing that we have, uh, that outer casing on a DC machine. So what are the purposes of that uh, on a DC machine? That is our question. All right, so we've got uh, some of these purposes yet that we can take into consideration that it forms the outer casing of the machine that is our DC machine. So it forms the outer casing. It supports the main field system and also it forms the magnetic circuit of the main poles. So that is what we have uh, on the uh, outer casing part, which is uh, in this case, uh, the yoke of a, a DC machine. All right, then the other part of our question which is on 2.2 as to briefly explain commutation is applicable to a DC ma machine. What is it that we understand by the word uh, commutation in uh, DC machines? All right, so if we check here, we have got uh, the explanation that uh, the commutation is simply the reversal of the EMF and the current in short, circuited and coil, uh, during its transfer from one commutator segment to the next. So that is the reversal of the EMF and the current in the short-circuited coil during its transfer from one commutator segment to the next. So that is what we simply have on the commutation as long we are working on a DC uh, machine. Then the other part, uh, which is on calculations, which is the major part that I want us to actually focus on. We are given on question number 2.3 that we have got uh, a 440 volt shunt wound generator. All right, so here we are focusing with a generator in this case. So with the information that we are given, we are given that it produces an armature current of 40 amps. The resistances of the shunt field and the armature are 220, 0 0.25 respective. We calculate the magnitude of the generated EMF. So in this case, if you are to check, this is a question where we are given a condition. We, we, we are given, in this case, uh, the field windings. In this case, uh, we have got uh, the field uh, resistance and armature resistance. So how can we formulate our generated emf that is our, our question in this case how can we have the generated emf so we can have this in form of a diagram let's say we got this in form of a diagram let me just show you what we are having because this is a a shunt we are having this as a shunt wound so we are going to obtain something of this nature yes i'm going to take the information later on so we are going to have our field winding in this case uh, which has got its resistance. And uh, here we are going to have our EMF being generated. Uh, in this case, we are referring to a generator. So a generator, it uh, uh, generates the current. While it's a motor, it draws the current. This is what you're supposed to understand between these two. So what I want you to understand also uh, it's not about answering this question, but also understanding the basic knowledge that you need here to say if it is a generator, it generates the current in this case. So here we are going to have the current from the armature, which is going to be supplied to them. Uh, in this case, we are going to supply to the field winding and also we are going to have this at the supply. Uh, remember, we're saying it generates, so we are going to be supplying. While it's a motor, it takes in current. The current is going to be flowing into the motor. That is uh, the difference that we have. Okay, this is not uh, much important on our answering. Uh, what you just need to know, this is your terminal where we are given the voltage of 440 here at the terminal. So this is our voltage here of uh, 440 volts. 
uh, then an armature, it produces an armature current. So this is the current being produced from the armature here. So remember, this is our RA. So here we are going to have our armature current of uh, 40 amps. So it is producing an armature current of uh, 40 amps in this case. So we have got uh, 40 amps. Then uh, we are given the resistances of the shunt field. This is our field here. So we are given RF. So our RF in the shunt, which is uh, 220 ohms and 0 0.25 for the armature. In this case, our RA for the armature, that is 0 0.25 ohms. So this is like the information that you're actually having on your diagram. But uh, like I said, uh, it's not that much important. Uh, this is going to be uh, the current that flows at the, at the terminal, which is uh, IL. So with this information, our question is to calculate the generated a magnitude of the generated EMF. All right. There's a difference between these two, a generator and a motor. For a motor, we have got a back EMF, but for a, a generator, we've got uh, the generated EMF, uh, which is given as E is equal to V, that is going to be our terminal voltage plus the armature current uh, times the armature resistance. Why least if you are working with a motor now, this is going to be a negative because it's a back EMF. So that will be a negative. So in this case, uh, we having all these, the V at the terminal, we've got 440. So this is going to be 440 plus the armature current times the resistance on the armature because here we've got a voltage uh, that we have that from current and resistance. So we are going to have 40 times the armature resistance of uh, 0 0.25. So in this case, we are going to obtain the generated EMF of which uh, if we simplify properly, uh, that will be 440 plus uh, 40 times up. Uh, 0 0.25, that will be a 10. So if we add, we are going to obtain uh, 450 uh, volts. So like I said, that's our generated EMF. Then the last part of our question in this case was to calculate the electrical power output of the machine in kilowatts. So the output in this case is the one that we are having at the terminal. This is where we are having our output at the terminal. So on the output, which part can we use to obtain the output? We have the voltage and the current, which is flowing here. So meaning to say we can apply our power from this concept, our power in this case. Uh, so that's 2.32. Our power, which is the power output, is going to be the voltage times the current because it's a DC. This one is a DC volta voltage. So we are going to have... Uh, voltage times current. This is under a DC. If it is the three phase, that is where we have uh, those VL cos of theta, this and that. But here we are just working with the voltage times current because it's a DC uh, circuit that we are given at the end. So do we have the supply, this IL in this case at the terminal? Are we having this current? We do not have, we only have the amateur current so how can we determine this? That is the question now. All right. So if you check on your circuit here, the voltage that is across here, the terminal voltage is the same because this is a parallel circuit. So meaning to say across the field here, we also have the voltage of 440 volts. Across here, we also have the same force. We are saying this is in parallel. So the voltage here across is simply the same. So if we have got the same voltage, that means we are going to use the voltage to calculate the current across uh, the field uh, resistor, the, the field uh, part that we are given here, our field winding. So meaning to say with the voltage and the field winding, which is the resistance of the field winding, which is 220 ohms, we can calculate the current. Why calculating this current? If we take note from your Kirchhoff's laws, we understand that the current flowing towards the junction, this is our junction here, which is IA, this from the amateur current is flowing towards, is equal to these two flowing away from the junction. So that means we can say the current from the amateur is equal to the sum of these two flowing away, which is uh, uh, the load current 
uh, plus the field current in this case. As we are focusing on calculating IL, so you can make it IL the subject by transposing IF. That means we are going to have IA minus IF, which is equal to IL. That means we can say at the end, our current is going to be given by the armature current minus the field current. But if we check, we do not have again our field current. We do not. We have got armature current. We are already given our armature current as 40 amps. So where are we going to obtain now uh, the field? Uh, that is our field uh, uh, current in this case from the field resistance. So that's where I was saying we can apply uh, the voltage that we are given in this case. Let me remove this part. So we can apply the voltage concept to say from the voltage that we have since it is in parallel. Therefore, it means we've got the same voltage. So remember, voltage is equivalent to current times resistance. So meaning if we want to current, current is going to be voltage over resistance. We divide by resistance by resistance. So the current that we are referring to in this case is the field current. The voltage that we are referring to is the, our terminal voltage. The resistance that we are referring is the resistance for the field winding in this case. So that means we can uh, substitute our values. So IF is going to be V, which is uh, 440 over RF, our RF, which is uh, 220. So that means our IF in this case uh, is going to give us 2 amps. So with the 2 amps, now we can take this into our formula because we said the current that we need IL is equal to the armature current, which is our armature current in this case, that's 40 amps minus the field current, the one that we calculated now, which is two amps. So if we subtract these two, we are going to obtain uh, 38 amps. But this is not our question, remember. This part we are using, we are, we are calculating this in order for us to obtain the output power because we are in short of this current. This is the one that we do not have on our formula. So therefore, our output power is going to be the voltage. That is our terminal voltage of 440 times the current that is at the, at the, at the load, which is at the terminal, the one that goes together with this voltage, which is IL, the one that we calculated now, which is uh, 38 amps. So these are some of the stages that you just need to go through. Calculating of these currents, once you have got everything, therefore you can calculate your power. So if you multiply these two, we are going to obtain 16,720 watts. But if we check the instruction is in kilowatts. So meaning we are supposed to convert this to kilowatts. How do I convert to kilowatts? Kilowatts means times 10 to the exponent of three watts. So in order for us to convert to kilowatts, we multiply by the inverse of this, which is 10 to the exponent of minus three. So you multiply by the inverse, 10 to the exponent of minus three. The answer that you get from your calculator will be automatically in kilowatts. So if you multiply by 10, to the exponent of minus three, you're going to obtain 16,72. That answer is now in kilowatts. All right, so this is our output power in this case, the one that we are being asked on our question. So all we needed in this case was uh, to calculate the current that is uh, at the terminal with the voltage that we have at the terminal. We can use that voltage and current to determine uh, the power. So these are the stages that we are supposed to consider in our calculations. So that is it, guys, uh, from Amazon African Motives, working on electrotechnology entry till we meet again.